Revenge! Ribbit. 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 Casey, the frog is barking. Let him out. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Journey Today Show. I'm David. And I'm Casey. Hey, Casey, you are not going to believe this. I had the weirdest dream. I was sound asleep, and I woke up with you standing above me, croaking like a frog. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't a dream. What? Well, that's even more weird. Why were you doing that? I'm not proud of this, but do you remember that time I was sleeping and you woke me up with the pot and the spoon and all of the yelling? Yeah, I, I remember that. Well, I guess I'm still a little upset about it and I was trying to get revenge, but obviously it didn't work. Why couldn't I get the pot and the spoon to make any noise? Hmm. That's weird. Maybe I banged all the sound out of it last time. And what about the croaking noises that were coming out of my mouth? Uh, maybe just a little frog in your throat. David, that's not even... You know what? Never mind. I made a bad choice. I shouldn't have tried to get revenge in the first place. Yeah. You know what my grandpa always said about revenge? Here's the thing about revenge! Wait a second. Who was I talking about? That's not very helpful. No, uh, but then after a few minutes, he would remember and tell us a verse from the Bible. He would say, make sure that no one pays back one wrong act with another. Instead, always try to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 Oh man, that's such a good verse. Oh, it really is. In fact, the Bible has a lot to say about not getting revenge. But not only that, it also tells us what we should do when we have a conflict with another person. Oh, do you mean the verses in Matthew chapter 18? That's exactly what I was thinking of. Uh, you know what? I think we should read those verses for ourselves. So let's do this. In just a second, press pause on the video, then open your Bible and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, we'll see you back here. Welcome back, everybody. Wasn't that so interesting? In those verses, Jesus starts off by talking about what God does when one of us messes up and wanders away like a sheep into the darkness of sin. It says he leaves the other sheep to go find us and bring us back. So it's no accident that he then tells us what we should do when someone sins against us. In a way, Jesus is kind of telling us how we can be like good shepherds who go out and bring back the lost sheep who have hurt us. Yeah, and if you think about it, we've all had people who have hurt us or made us angry. In fact, this kind of gives me an idea for a two-part challenge. For the first part, you and I are going to draw the prettiest pictures we can. When we're finished, I'll tell you what part two is. So what do you think? Are you up for it? Oh yeah, bring it on, let's do it. All right, in three, two, one, go! your drawing. That was a lot of fun. It's been a long time since I just sat and drew. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, okay. I cannot wait to see what you drew. Okay. Are you ready to show it? I'm ready. All right, go ahead. Here we go. Bam. 
Wow. Mountain scene. That is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very pleased with it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're a really good artist. Well, thank you. Not quite as good as me, but very impressive. Thank you. Are you ready to see mine? I am so excited to see yours. Okay. You're going to love it. Here it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, What is it? Oh, well, I thought it was kind of obvious, but I will explain it anyway. Please do. It is a giant gopher uh, eating a tree. Of course it is. I see it now. Yeah, yes, you did yeah. a wonderful job. Oh my gosh. That <laughs> was super fun. And I love my drawing. Seriously, look at this masterpiece. I mean, my gopher is wearing a red hat and he's still eating some of the tree. This thing should go into a museum, but I'm going to hang it on my wall and enjoy it forever. Well, not so fast, Picasso, because we still have part two of the challenge. I have got a couple of paintball guns. And for the next part, we're going to use each other's pictures for target practice. We're going to do what? Here's how it's going to work. You and I get to take shots at each other's pictures. Whoever hits their target the most number of times wins the challenge. Are you ready for this? I think you're crazy. But but you know what? I don't think you're going to hit my drawing even one time. So you're on. All right. Let's get into position. Ready. Aim. Fire. That's it. That's it. I'm out of paintballs. Yeah, I am too. Let's get our drawings and take them back inside. All right, time to see the damage. I'll go first. Whoa. David. Oh, oh man. <laughs> My word. Oh, I tore oh, your drawing you, up. You Like, it is hanging on by a thread. Oh, man. I, you know what? I think it looks even more beautiful now. Oh, so, well, thank you. Oh, yeah. You did a beautiful job. Let me show you mine. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! I took a whole corner out of yours. You did. You destroyed oh, my man. masterpiece. I'm so sorry, but uh, all for the challenge. All for the challenge. You know what? I hate to admit this, but I think you hit mine even more than I yes. hit yours. I think you win this yes. challenge. Ooh. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm but so seriously, happy. though, can you please tell me why we just did that? That's a great question. So imagine this for a second. Imagine you just spent a long time creating the most beautiful drawing you've ever created. Then, all of a sudden, your friend from church takes the picture and uses it for paintball target practice. I don't have to imagine that. That is exactly what you just did to my drawing. I know, I know, but for everyone who's watching at home or church, they can imagine it. So then, when you finally find out what happened and you see what used to be your beautiful masterpiece, you are so angry. You can't believe they would do that. And the more you think about it, the more angry you get until finally you're ready to burst. I think I can imagine that. Yeah, something like that. Then, when you explode, you say you never want to talk to them again, and you push them out of your life. But that's obviously not what Jesus wants us to do. When someone sins against you, Jesus doesn't want you to push them away. He wants you to pursue them, like the shepherd did with the lost sheep. And guess what? In Matthew 18, Jesus tells us exactly how to do that. First, Jesus says to tell the person what they did wrong in private. Do you notice something? Jesus says to tell them, not to yell at them. When you talk to the person, don't do it out of anger. Do it because you love them and you want to see them live God's way. And do it in private. Just talk to the person who hurt you. Don't gossip and tell everyone what a terrible thing they did. That's right. Then second, if the person won't listen to you, Jesus says to take one or two other people with you. So talk to your parents or your teacher or some other adult that you trust. 
Without being mean, tell them what happened and ask them to talk to the person with you. And third, if the person still won't listen, talk to your leaders at church. If the person goes to church with you, the leaders can talk to them too. You can look at the Bible together and see what God has to say about that situation. And if the person doesn't go to church with you, your leaders can pray with you and help you figure out what God wants you to do. If you follow these instructions from Jesus, you'll be a true peacemaker. In fact, you'll be doing exactly what our Bible verse for today says to do. It says, Turn away from evil and do good. Look for peace and go after it. Psalm 34, 14. I love that Bible verse. When someone hurts us, it's so easy to want revenge or to push them away. But this psalm says to turn away from evil things like that. It says to do good and to look for a peaceful way to solve our problems. You know what? That makes me think of a question. The next time somebody sins against you, what are you going to do to make peace with them? Press pause. And discuss. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had some great conversations. Here's the really good news. Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker. We sin against him all the time, but instead of getting revenge or pushing us away, he comes looking for us like the good shepherd. That's right. Then his spirit whispers in our heart and tells us what we did wrong. And when we come back to him, he forgives us and rejoices that the lost sheep has been found. That's so awesome. And by the way, David, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry for trying to get revenge earlier. I, I should have just talked to you and told you how I was feeling. I forgive you, Casey. And I'm sorry that I didn't wake you up more gently and carefully. I could have been a lot nicer about it. In fact, to make up for it, I fixed the pot and spoon for you. It should be working just fine now. That's okay. I forgive you anyways. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye, everybody. Honk, 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 honk. Was that a goose or a horn? Yes. <laughs>